Good morning. So we are officially in the third week of Lent, and I thought that this would be a fantastic time to check in on how our Lent is going. So you don't have to verbalize your response, but my question would be, how is your Lent going? I think it's really a good opportunity to just stop and reflect and say, what did I commit to doing or not doing for Lent? How did I promise to walk with our Lord spiritually in the desert for these 40 days before Holy Week? And how am I doing? So earlier this week, I was called out, all right, because the last number of Lents, I've decided to give up social media. Now, I usually delete the application of social media apps from my phone, so they're just not there. But this year, I decided to just hide them on the home screen, so it became a little more difficult to get to them. And I figured I would be disciplined enough to not open them up. And then, surely, on Monday or Tuesday, I happened to be scrolling through a social media account, and my wife said, I thought you gave that up. And it really was like a gut punch to me. And I said, ooh, man, wow, how did I do this? I thought I had control over this. And so I went right into the phone and I deleted, got rid of them. I'm like, I'm not going to look at these. But I have to say, like, as much as I look forward to Lent every year, and I really do, I mean, Ash Wednesday to me is like Christmas. I really just look forward to it every year because it's such a special season where we can really stop and reflect on what we're doing. And yet I find myself every Lent feeling like an absolute failure. I feel so weak and helpless when I catch myself not sticking to my Lenten commitments. And this Lent has been no different. But as I think about this, and I wonder why I am so weak, I always then start to look forward to Easter. Because spiritually, I really do feel like I am down in a hole somewhere, in a dark pit. And once Easter vigil happens, And we come into this church on that special night, and it's just dark. And we bring that Paschal candle in, and that light slowly spreads throughout the church. And that light comes in. I really spiritually just feel like I am just being pulled right up out of it. So I think it's a good thing to feel that way during Lent. I think it's necessary to just shed ourselves of all of those things, but... You know, this is, a, uh, this is a wonderful invention, right? This is a, a, this, we can do amazing things on this. I mean, I am very productive, I will tell you, outside of social media. You know, I'm able to respond to my emails, and I can respond to my text messages. I can have calls. I can, I can get directions to where I need to go. It, it really does amazing things. But it can also be a terrible thing if it's misused. And so today's gospel reading is probably one that many of us are familiar with. It's really the one time in all of the gospels where we see Jesus really kind of lose his patience, right? He seems like he gets a little upset and goes in to cleanse the temple. And kind of like the phone being a good thing and having a necessary place, we might ask ourselves, why were there sheep and oxen and doves and money changers and coins and all these things in the temple to begin with when it's a place of worship where God resides and we go to worship why are all these things there to begin with now we have to understand a little bit about the ancient temple worship of the Israelites because every feast of the Passover all of the Jews would come down to Jerusalem And they would bring an offering, usually some type of an animal, and they would give it to the priest who would sacrifice it at the altar as reparation for their sins. Now some travelers came from many miles away, and they didn't have a station wagon or an SUV, and they had to travel all the way down to Jerusalem, 
And so there was a need for a marketplace to be there so that they could simply go and purchase a sacrificial offering to bring inside of the temple. And what happened is over time, they got lax, and that marketplace slowly kind of seeped in and kind of pushed out exactly what was supposed to be going on inside. So there were distractions, and people were not able to worship properly, and Jesus, rightly so, became upset and he chased them out of the temple my father's house is supposed to be a house of prayer and you're turning it into a marketplace and so we see something good being abused and really becoming a huge distraction for the believers now in our old testament reading which is a long one this week right it was long And there's lots of rules, lots of commandments, and sadly many of us will look at that, or many of us, of our brothers and sisters that are separated from the church may say, yeah, all your rules at your church, yeah, that's great. I don't want the rules. But it's not about the rules, right? If we listen to the beginning of that reading, God is telling his people, Do not be a slave. I am giving you this commandment so that you can be free from all of those things and we can focus on each other. Do not be a slave to an idol. Do not replace me in our relationship with something that you created. And every year, this is why I love working with Uh, our young people in religious education, right? Because we go through Scripture and we talk about the golden calf and we talk about idols and we talk about slavery and they're like, we don't have any of that stuff, right? No, we do. We do. And Lent is the time of year for us to shed those distractions, for us to move those idols out of the way because you and I are temples. Right? And God wants to live inside of us. The Holy Spirit wants to be inside, wants to reside inside of our hearts. But what will He find there? So, maybe this is a fantastic time to be intentional. And maybe it's okay to get upset with ourselves and go into our temples and say, we're making space. Clear out. This is God's home. So I hope we all take a few minutes today, tomorrow, during the week to really sit down and say, how can I make this a different type of Lent? God bless you.